I'm Mo Rocca, and I'm excited to announce season four of my podcast, Mobituaries. I've got a whole new bunch of stories to share with you about the most fascinating people and things who are no longer with us. From famous figures who died on the very same day to the things I wish would die, like buffets, all that and much more. Listen to Mobituaries with Mo Rocca wherever you get your podcasts. Today on CityCast Philly, driving in this city can get dangerous. Sometimes people plow through stop signs, speed on the boulevard, and get reckless on Lincoln Drive. So could a new law adding more speed cameras on Philly streets make them safer? It's Tuesday, January 16th. I'm Trinae Nuri, and here's what Philly's talking about. Joining me is Aaron Mozell, reporter at WHYY's Plan Philly. Great to have you back on the show. Pleasure to be here. You recently wrote about road safety in Philly and ways to make our streets safer. Aaron, I have to ask you this question. What is the most dangerous street or roadway in Philly? I'm not sure what's topping the list at this point. I mean, I think a lot of the roads that people think about are still up there, I would imagine. Um, We've got like you mentioned, Roosevelt Boulevard um, that cuts through the Northeast. You got Henry Avenue in Northwest Philly. You got Lincoln Drive. You got Kelly Drive, um, Cobbs Creek Parkway. So there are any number of roads in Philly where people are not usually super thrilled to drive on them because just of the rate of speeding and, and the rate of accidents there. Now, to be fair, I have noticed that there are a lot more speed bumps on streets to kind of like signal to drivers, like slow down, especially near schools and some busier intersections and roadways in the city. Yeah, that is not just you. The city is taking pains to put up uh, any number of speed bumps, speed humps, speed tables, uh, particularly in school zones as well, um, following a, a city council um, bill that passed not too long ago. They uh, don't go up super fast because they only are, are done on Saturdays um, by the streets department, but they are certainly part of this sort of comprehensive strategy the city is working on to slow people down and hopefully save lives in the process. But unfortunately, there are some times when things are more dangerous, people get hit or even killed. What does the data show, Aaron? How many people are injured or killed on a roadway in Philly, let's say last year? Yeah. um, So there's a number of different data points we could look at. I'll give you sort of hit and runs. 2023, we had um, at least 40 people die in hit and runs. Mm -hmm. um, And that was, you know, more than the previous year and more than double um, the total that we had in 2019. And this is at a time when Philly's traffic safety death rate um, is still surpassing big cities like New York and Chicago, cities that have obviously a lot more people, a lot more cars. So it's really gotten to this point where folks who are paying attention to this stuff feel like we've reached a crisis. And it's not that Philly is the only city in the country that's dealing with traffic safety issues. Other big cities saw spikes in traffic fatalities, saw you know upticks in speeding and reckless driving. But Philly, for whatever reason, has had a harder time getting that problem under control. It has moderated since the pandemic, but it is still certainly a problem to folks who are out there looking at this stuff, both for uh, fellow drivers and certainly for pedestrians, people just trying to cross the street. Aaron, you've reported that since 2020, There's been speed cameras along Roosevelt Boulevard to try to reduce deadly crashes. This was sort of like a pilot program. What have we learned about this particular pilot program? Was it a success? If you talk to the folks who were responsible for installing the cameras and operating them and have watched this over the last few years, they say it was a a huge success. A couple of the points that they highlight is that one, violations along that stretch of the boulevard, which we're talking about 10 um, intersections, the number of tickets people are getting for for going too fast have dropped 90% um, during the pilot. 
um, which is the intended goal, you know, so that's reflected in the number of violations that are, are being handed out and issued to folks. Um, the other thing is that speed at those intersections, speeding has reduced by 95%. Um, and then, you know, I'll throw out a third is that, you know, working with a consultant, the city has determined that those cameras have saved 36 lives. So these are all obviously all positive um, marks here and, you know, collectively a big part of why uh, folks felt confident pushing for more cameras um, because of those those numbers. So, Aaron, you know, I've driven along Roosevelt Boulevard. Um, where exactly are these cameras? Is it along the full Roosevelt Boulevard? No. So the full boulevard is, you know, depending on who you ask, you know, it's, it's over 10 miles, uh, sort of in that 14 to 16 mile range. So these cameras are just on a four mile stretch um, of Roosevelt Boulevard, um, sort of on the lower end of things. So kind of around the Olney area, if people are familiar or um, going into towards Frankfurt, kind of in the lower northeast um, so you wouldn't see them if you're riding, um, you know, north of that or south of that. I will say that there are some signs that, you know, tell drivers or alert drivers like, hey, be careful. There's some recording going on. Yeah, exactly. And that's part of the program, too, is is to you know pe- give people a heads up with the hope that they will slow down, you know, before they get to the speed camera intersections. They're actually kind of hard to spot, especially if you're going like 40, 50 miles an hour because right. they're tucked underneath the signs. Yes. Like I had, I, when I got on the street, I was like, where are these cameras? Is that it? Oh, no, that's it. And they're, the, they're squat and they're beige and they kind of like, I think it's on purpose. I mean, I'd be surprised. Yeah, for sure. How do these cameras work? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's fairly simple. You, you know, you have at these intersections uh, a bank of, uh, speed cameras suspended above the street, and um, if you're speeding, that tape will be reviewed by uh, the Philadelphia Parking Authority, and then in the legislation, you get a ticket if you're going at least 11 miles over the speed okay. limit. Um, so these are not cheap tickets. These are not your $26, um, I went over the meter tickets. These are pretty serious for most people. Uh, in Philadelphia, at least they can go all the way up to $150. So I think that as far as traffic safety advocates are concerned is really deterring folks because they don't want to get a bunch of those taken out of their bank account. We're going to get into ways that we can keep our streets safer and maybe slow cars down after the break. This is CityCast Philly. Aaron, it seems like a good thing that state lawmakers signed a new law in December of 2023 that's going to actually expand this speed camera program that we've seen on the Roosevelt Boulevard. Now, the the pilot program will be permanent. Um, where do lawmakers want to add more speed cameras? That is the big question now. So they've gotten the approval from Harrisburg, the Logistics of the program are, are essentially in place uh, within the bill and because of the pilot on Roosevelt. And now it's about determining where do we put these. You know, every time I've t- talked to folks from the city or anyone kind of involved with this program and asked, well, where are you going to put these cameras? You hear some of the typical responses that you might expect, you know, Henry Avenue and Roxborough and Kelly Drive and Lincoln Drive and Cobbs Creek Parkway, areas where speeding is known to be a problem. That's not to say those will be on the list, but I would be surprised if none of those ended up on the list. So there are five corridors. Those will probably in the, be in the mix for those. And then there will be five school zones that will also be automated speed cameras on a pilot basis. And those are still to be determined as well. So it's going to take a little time and there's a public comment period and city council legislation needs to get passed. So it'll be a little bit before uh, the mystery is, is solved, so to speak. Do you have somewhat of a timeline or just like a framing of like when could drivers start getting tickets at some of these other hot spots in the city? So, you know, the expectation is that it will at least take several months to get through the process. There's, as I mentioned, a city council process for each location. So once they approve 
all of the locations, you got to have a district council member introduce legislation mm. for those speed cameras at that particular location. So e that each of those has to get sort of a, a public comment way in as well. So it, there's a number of steps that need to happen. Okay. Aaron, you've spoken to a family who unfortunately lost some loved ones in a traffic-related death. How do they feel about the use of speed cameras as a method to make Philly streets safer? Um, yes, yeah, so I talked to Latanya Bird, who became a traffic safety advocate after her niece and three of her niece's sons were killed while they were crossing Roosevelt Boulevard. This is about a decade ago, and she kind of threw herself into this work specifically around automated speed cameras because to her they represented a significant tool to stopping speeding. And so, you know, as you would imagine, she's pretty thrilled. She was thrilled with the pilot, um, even though she thought it should never have been a pilot, they should have just thrown them up permanently. And she's thrilled that they're going to be expanded because um, that more locations will will have speed cameras because to her, they, they really work. Um, she's seen the numbers as others have. You know, like other traffic safety advocates, she doesn't think that they are the only thing that will cure Philly's traffic safety problem, but um, they will, in her mind, go a long way um, in saving people's lives and saving people from the experience that, that she's gone through and, and still is, is you know, working through. But there are folks that are actually pushing back on this method, this use of speed cameras. Aaron, what's their argument? Yeah, so there is a group called the National Motorist Association. It's a, a membership group. And, you know, that group is not against speeding, is not against traffic safety, but they do disagree with how to slow down drivers. And they believe that speed cameras are too punitive, that they can be regressive by, you know, ticketing folks who don't have money to afford a $100 ticket, for example, okay. which certainly um, can be relevant in Philadelphia, which um, continues to have the moniker of the poorest big city in the country. Um, they would prefer to see what they call engineering solutions. Um, so potentially changing the speed limit and sort of right-sizing that um, for the speed that folks actually travel on a road like Roosevelt Boulevard or doing other um, infrastructure improvements to the roads. They also are advocates of speed feedback signs, which are those signs that, you know, when you're driving along, they kind of spit back the speed you're going and you can see what the speed is supposed mm -hmm. to be. They think that in that case, you know, that provides some real time feedback for folks to say, hey, I'm going too fast. And then they correct themselves in the moment versus like getting a ticket weeks later saying, oh, I kind of vaguely remember speeding on that road. You know, we talked about speed cameras and speed bumps, but what other measures are road advocates seeking to slow down Philly drivers? Yeah, I think the speed cameras and the speed tables are at the top there. And then there are other things that um, people may have seen as they're driving, you know, like little bollards kind of in to, to separate the, the lanes in the street. Obviously, signage is, is a big part of this to kind of you know, let folks know repeatedly what the speed limit is and that they need to slow down. There's there's sort of a whole menu of devices that the streets department and PennDOT have at their disposal. I know that the speed cameras and the speed tables are sort of really at the top of the list because they are they are so effective, even if people grouse about them. And then once the cameras actually go up, um, at least with the Roosevelt Boulevard cameras, there was a 30-day grace period where if you were caught speeding, you would get just a written warning, um, you know, no fine at that point. But after that, um, it would be fair game for you to get a violation and, and to have to pay up. If I'm just a resident, how do I go about, like, bringing attention to a dangerous corner where kids are crossing or there's a lot of traffic where a lot of pedestrian traffic, like how do I go about bringing that issue up to the city? Yeah, there are a couple of routes for that. And the first one is you can reach out to 311 um, and you can also reach out to the streets department directly. This is how a lot of the speed humps that you're seeing are getting done because residents are complaining. They are reaching out. Uh, the city 
gets those complaints, they look into them that, to determine whether or not the streets qualify for some kind of intervention like a speed hump. And if they think so, then they try to get a consensus on the block that people want them, and then um, they are eventually installed. Uh, it does take some time, as I said, but that's generally a process. For the speed cameras, it's going to be a little bit different, um, but there will be a chance for the, for the public to weigh in on the locations and I assume maybe suggest some as well, though we haven't seen the details of, of that public process yet. All right, Aaron Moselle, reporter at WHYY's Planned Philly. Thanks for breaking this all down with me on CityCast Philly. My pleasure. Read more of Aaron's reporting on this issue by checking out the link in our show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about the ways the city's making Philly streets safer, tell a friend. Rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.